Are you satisfied with the state's efforts to address the safety issues related to the stretch of Interstate 95 through New London? If not, what more needs to be done? Well, actually, that's a very good question. Thank you. Uh, actually, I'm a victim of the 95 quarter out there. A uh, year and a half ago, I was on my way to my granddaughter's birthday party, and where 395 comes in, traffic was stopped there, and uh, we got hit 70 miles an hour by a person not paying attention to traffic. So uh, I think there are some. Th there's been some real tragic deaths, especially where 395 uh, exit 74 in East Lime comes to effect. Um, I don't know if it's uh, feasibly possible to widen the roads there to take out the traffic. Uh, there's been talk for years about, you know, enhancing the rail lines for uh, shipping of, um, so we're not sh uh, having as many trucks, tractor trailers go through there with shipping goods and services. Uh, that's got to be looked into. Um, it is a, a serious issue through there, uh, all down 95. The traffic now has built tremendously over the years. I mean. You see in New Haven where they've widened the roads down there to three lanes of the bridge, then coming right over that bridge, very shortly within five minutes, you're right back into two lanes of heavy traffic. Um, of course, with the budget restraints right now, do we have the money to, uh, infrastructurally to extend highway roads through there, right up through uh, into Rhode Island? Uh, it, it would be a help. Uh, Shoreline East has helped a bit by taking some of the normal traffic off the roads and doing commuting. Um, if the train that's been allocated, you know, about $80, million, $80 billion go through here in New London for more traffic of rail up through Worcester uh, and into uh, parts of Vermont, that might also help alleviate the traffic. But I, I think there has to be some type of um, uh, infrastructure money raised, which is very tough right now with the budget condition we're in, to uh, alleviate that problem through that quarter. Uh, Ms. Stala? Okay. Um, well, I probably will say some really unpopular things. Um, first of all, widening a road, um, the highways generally does not solve the traffic problem. Um, it's like you know what you know taking a, a, a different notch in your belt if you if, if you if you gain weight. It's like the, the the lanes fill up, and I've driven a lot in Maryland where there are five lanes, and I'll tell you, it's a whole lot more. Uh, dangerous and scarier than I-95 coming through Southeast Connecticut because the cars uh, converge when there, there are more lanes. So what do we do? Um, you know, Mr. Lockwood mentioned rail. Uh, I think our gas prices are too low. Uh, Shoreline East ridership um, kind of goes up and down uh, in correlation with gas prices. And uh, the ridership now, the gas prices are low, has gone down, and there are more people on the road. And I think the public doesn't know to what extent we subsidized the drivers, and if we subsidized ways to get people off the roads to an equal amount through uh, commuter rail, uh, it would be a big improvement. Uh, and the other very unpopular thing that I'll bring up is uh, there is the technology to perhaps uh, – do some kind of congestion tolls. Um, now you don't have to stop at toll booths for tolls. I just came over the Tappan Zee Bridge about a month ago. They, they take a picture of you, they send you a bill. And especially in Fairfield County where there is a huge amount of traffic of uh, uh, people re you know, going back and forth to New York City at the beginning and end of the workday, um, I think we should look at our uh, technology and see if during the crowded times we could charge tolls and not charge during the empty times uh, because unfortunately um, people's behavior is often changed by negative uh, outcomes and, and just the carrot doesn't always work. Mr. Soda. Yes, that leaves me. Um, so. I, I agree following up on, on what Rana said. Um, we should, you know, it is a time to look at tolls and, and in a new way, right? Um, I lived in Miami and traffic down there was terrible and what they did to kind of alleviate that congestion was use those lanes um, for, you know, during high traffic periods. Um, and they do have different um, kind of payment scales. Um, and I think, you know, again, her point is right that that, that will hopefully um, change some of the behavior patterns that we do have. I also, but I do think that also, you know, Americans don't want to give up their cars, right? And um, so even though we are going to kind of open up the belt loop, um, 
the cars are not going away, right? Um, and so we might alleviate some stuff on rail and some, and if we had a be better public transportation infrastructure, but I don't see cars going away and, and we probably do need to look at, you know, what we can do um, for those dangerous areas on the highway. Um, again, looking at tolls and it's, it's unpopular, but you know what, every time I go to my parents' house in New Jersey and I have to pay $14 to get across the George Washington Bridge, you know, I think to myself, why aren't we doing the same thing um, in Connecticut? Cause we're subsidizing all the people that are transiting through. And, and just to go back to you, Mr. Lockwood, uh, uh, both your opponents have, have voiced support for tolls, uh, and you talked about the, the budget implications. So it sounds like they direct that revenue in different ways. But they both both said uh, would support tolls. You, you didn't mention tolls one way or the other. I'd just like to give you a chance. Well, uh, first of all, I guess I'll address the tolls th this way. The, uh, the tolls that, that Chris has talked about in Florida, I travel to Florida quite a bit. Uh, those tolls aren't stopping tolls, so they're not actually slowing down traffic. I mean, like Rana said, they're monitored tolls. You go under a camera, they, you know, either you get it charged through Easy Pass or they send you a bill. Mm -hmm. So it's really not stepping traffic down where you're, you know, slowing traffic for a while where traffic catches up and it breaks up traffic. No, oh, not um, to cut you off, but um, in Miami, they are. So they're not stopping tolls in Miami, just so you know. Yeah, right. They're not stopping tolls. Right. You're just driving right along. So they're not really, they're not. You know, it, one of the purposes of tolls originally was a to raise re revenue for the state and also slow down traffic, so you get a break in the traffic where you're not, you know, bumper to bumper every second of the mile. Um, the other thing with tolls is, if the toll money was going to be allocated in this state to the proper function to fix roadways and and do the repairs and things like that that we need, that would be great. But it seems like every time we get a new tax, which a toll basically is, it goes to a general fund or to some other purpose, and it never gets directed in the budget to where it's supposed to be. So at the present time, I'm not in favor of tolls. We had tolls before, spent a lot of money to take them out, and every time Connecticut has a revenue spending, they're looking for either a toll or a, a tax on your car or, or a mileage tax. So I'm not really in favor of that, now. All right. Um, <clears throat> I'll be asking the next uh, question of uh, Ronna Stuller.